What is going on everybody? My name is John Solo and welcome to another episode of Messed Up Origins. In the previous two episodes, we talked about Mulan, both the original poem that inspired the Disney movie and the 1968 live action film. Those were probably our most requested episodes, but today we are discussing another story you guys have been especially vocal about wanting to hear, The Princess and the Frog. You guys are in for an interesting episode because wow did Disney take an out of the box approach to a classic story everybody knows. Of course we are going to go over the movie right now for the homies who haven't seen it yet and for those who need a refresher. So just sit back, relax, hit that like button, and let's dive in. The Princess and the Frog follows a young woman named Tiana who has an incredible work ethic and is saving up money to open a restaurant and fulfill the dream of her dead father. After finding out someone outbid her for the space she wanted for the restaurant, she starts to lose hope and questions if all of her hard work was worth it. This is when she meets a talking frog who is actually a handsome prince that needs help being changed back into a human. Tiana tries kissing him to reverse the curse just like in the fairy tale, but all this does is turn her into a frog and from here, things just get crazier. Tiana and Prince Naveen go on a wild adventure where they make friends with an alligator and firefly who lead them to an old priestess that might know how to reverse the frog curse. Oh, and while all this is happening, the creepy guy who actually put the curse on the prince is using dark voodoo magic to try to catch him. So Mama Odie reveals that for Naveen to turn back into a human, he must kiss a true princess. And it turns out that through a weird loophole, Tiana's friend Charlotte is given the title of princess during Mardi Gras. But because the creepy voodoo man's constant intervention, Naveen runs out of time to kiss Charlotte and both he and Tiana start to cope with the idea of being frogs the rest of their lives. Also, the voodoo man gets killed by the voodoo spirits. Who would have guessed that partnership wouldn't work out? Sometime later, Prince Naveen and Tiana end up having a frog wedding and when they finally kiss, they're actually turned back into humans since the marriage made Tiana a princess. Like I told y'all, kissing a princess breaks the spell. Once you became my wife, that made you a princess. In the end, Tiana gets to open up the restaurant she always dreamed of with the prince by her side and they live happily ever after. So that was how the minds over at Disney chose to tell the story of the frog prince. Fun fact, the writers of the movie, John Musker and Ron Clements, also wrote Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, and Moana. When you compare the films these guys make to the stories they're based on, you'll notice they always put a really interesting personal twist on them and this story is no exception. Before I get into it though, I want to make one point very clear and that's that there's at least a dozen different versions of the Frog Prince fairy tale. Today we're looking at the uncensored English translation of the Brothers Grimm story. Now uncensored doesn't actually mean there's a ton of adult themes, after all this is a children's fairy tale. But oftentimes when the Brothers Grimm stories were translated from German to English, the translator would alter certain elements that didn't line up with society's values at the time. The story we're about to dive into has none of that censorship. This is the most literal translation out there. That being said, Said, at the end of this episode, we are going to go over some of the alterations other versions of the story had, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Anyways, let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of the Frog Prince. Once upon a time, there was a king who had several beautiful daughters, and the most beautiful was the youngest, who we're just going to call the princess. Believe it or not, this story actually doesn't involve any evil sisters related by blood or by marriage. Isn't that a nice change of pace? Back in the days where people still lived in castles, there was no such thing as air conditioning. On the days where it would get hot, the princess would walk down to the well to cool off, and she would always bring her golden ball with to entertain herself. This was her favorite plaything in the world. When she would relax by the well, she would toss it up in the air and catch it, and apparently that's all people needed to be entertained before Vine came around and ruined everyone's attention spans. One day, while playing with the ball, she accidentally drops it in the well and immediately goes hysterical. This is when a frog pokes his head out of the water and says, hey princess, why are you crying? She tells him about the situation with the ball and he offers to go down and get it for her, but first he wants to establish what kind of reward he's going to get. Initially, she offers him her dress, her jewels, and her golden crown, but he turns them all down and has a counter offer. He says, if you will love me and accept me as a companion and playmate and let me sit next to you at your table and eat from your golden plate and drink from your cup and sleep in your bed, if you will promise this to me, then I'll dive down and bring your golden ball back to you. Now, you might think he's asking for a bit much 
much, but you have to remember this is the princess's most treasured possession. Also, we've established in previous episodes that princesses are not the best at negotiating terms. She agrees to the deal, and right after he dives down, she thinks, how stupid is this frog? Humans and frogs could never be companions. As soon as I get my ball back, I'm going home. And that's exactly what she does. As soon as the frog resurfaces with her ball, she sprints back to the castle without him. A few hours later, she's enjoying dinner with her father, the king, when she hears a knock at the door. Lo and behold, she hears the frog's voice calling out to her, talking about the deal they made and how she needs to fulfill her end of the bargain. Her father hears the frog's words as well, and he questions the princess about what he means, and she tells him about the situation. You might be surprised to hear this, but the king actually demands his daughter keep her word to satisfy the frog. She ends up letting the frog in, and he tells her to lift him up to the table so he can eat off her plate. After sharing a meal with a particularly disgusted princess, he says, all right, I've had enough. Take me to your bed so I can rest. The princess becomes visibly upset by this request because A, she doesn't want to touch the frog, and B, she doesn't want his dirty, slimy body in her clean bed. It is not slime. It is mucus. This is when her dad gets really angry with her. He tells her that you shouldn't ever despise someone who helped you in your time of need, which is sort of true, I guess. I feel like there's a lot of exceptions to that rule, but you get what he's trying to say. So the princess takes the frog to her room, holding him by two fingers the entire way. And then she places him in the corner and lies down in her bed alone. The frog then hops up to her and says, hey princess, I wanna be comfortable too. Let me sleep in your bed or I'm gonna tell your dad. And this is when the princess decides enough is enough. She could tolerate a frog, but never a rat, never a tattletale. She picks him up and throws him against the wall as hard as she can, hoping to kill him, and she says, now you'll have your peace, you disgusting frog. Only at this point, the frog is no longer a frog. He's already turned into a handsome prince. Understandably so, the princess is like, ah, uh, what the farts, man? And the prince tells her he was cursed by a wicked enchantress, and only the princess could break the spell. And if she wants, a carriage will be arriving the next morning to take them both to his castle. Because he's not a disgusting frog anymore, she lets the prince sleep in her bed, and the next morning a carriage arrives driven by my favorite character in this whole story, Loyal Heinrich. You're probably wondering, what makes Heinrich so loyal? So get a load of this. When the prince was transformed into a frog, Heinrich had three iron bands wrapped around his heart so it wouldn't burst with sadness. The prince and his bride are enjoying the ride home when suddenly they hear a loud crack. The prince calls out, Loyal Heinrich, I think the carriage is breaking, man. Did you hear that crack? And Loyal Loyal Heinrich, as calm as ever, tells them the true reason for the cracking. His heart is swelling with so much joy now that his master is happy and has been redeemed, the iron bands are starting to break. And on that kind of awkward note comes the end of our story. Believe it or not, the alternate name for this fairy tale is actually Iron Heinrich, but understandably nobody calls it that. Like I said earlier, there's at least a dozen different frog prince stories. Most of them are pretty similar with really small details changed depending on the language it's written in. The newer versions are the ones that include the kiss as being what changes the frog back into a prince, but there are some that are a lot darker. One version actually has the princess cut the frog's head off after he says he wants to sleep in bed with her. In another story, the frog has to sleep in the princess's bed for three nights and share three meals with her in order to break the curse. Whatever version you prefer, I think we can all agree this is a pretty weird story regardless. If you enjoyed this episode of Messed Up Origins, make sure you hit that like button so we can reach our goal of 5,000 likes. You guys haven't missed a single goal yet, so let's try to keep that going and start 2018 off strong. Actually, if you get this video to 7,000 likes before the weekend, I'll do another episode next week. Also, make sure you subscribe for weekly Disney content and turn notifications on since for some reason, my videos still aren't showing up in people's sub boxes. And hit that share button to easily share this video on your social medias with your Disney loving friends and family. I've got the links to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon in the description down below. Consider checking those out to show your support. Thank Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first.